Mate, now let's talk to Harold the H. Ah, cock, cock. Peacock. He's going to tell us about 19, uh, 1863 uh, New Year's resolution that went, made it to court. How are you, H? Fantastic, Danny, and Happy New Year to you and, and Damien and everyone. Uh, what about Sparky here? I mean, oh, is, if he's there, absolutely. Oh, no, don't talk to him. More than anyone. Now, now listen, right. let's talk about this 1863 New Year resolution. This is a true story. That's right. We all make New Year resolutions this time of year, don't we, Danny? But yeah. there's only one example that I've found in Australian history of a resolution actually being stated under oath yeah. and in court. Right. And, of course, it happened right here in Ipswich right. 159 years ago. Wow. Tell us. Anyway, the man who, yeah, the man who made the New Year resolution right. was William Greenaway. In 1861... Greenaway was a constable with the Ipswich Police. Yeah. Now, in June, he had a bit of a rough time because he was found guilty of disobedience of orders and fined one pound. But he was promoted to sergeant nonetheless. Oh. In 1862, What's new? <laughs> Greenaway was assaulted by the Ipswich bootmaker, Martin Lang. Oh, Lang. In 1863, for he was assaulted by... The drill instructor of the Queensland Light Horse, Sir William Harding. Now, <laughs> Harding administered a number of severe kicks to the sergeant. A dray had to be procured to take him to the watch house. And Harding even had to be tied down into the dray to get him there. <laughs> now, that was in March 1863. In August that year, Sergeant Greenaway was in trouble himself and found guilty of neglect of duty. Mm-hmm. What he did did wasn't recorded in the papers at the time mm. but was of such a serious nature that he was reduced to the rank of ordinary constable mm. but just two days later he was reinstated to sergeant mm. due to his previous good character and efficiency now in late december 1863 yeah. greenaway was convicted yeah. with absenting himself from duty being drunk and disobeying orders mm. and what's more Greenaway presented himself in court in a dreadful appearance uh-huh. and bore all the marks of having met with some brutal treatment somewhere. Now, Greenaway resigned his office of sergeant. The bench accepted his resignation, sergeant, but mm. retained him as an ordinary constable. Mm. In fact, the magistrate even directed him to lead his own investigation to find out who had assaulted him. <laughs> it was then that Greenaway created history by saying in court and under oath that his New Year resolution was never to enter a hotel again unless in the discharge of his duty. Wow. Now, this is the only... His resolution was published by the Queensland Times on the day before New Year, on the 31st of December, 1863. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's possibly the only New Year resolution in Australian history or in world history to, to have been made under oath and in court. Now, the very next day, to start 1864, the Queensland Police Force officially commenced. Mm. Now, before and before that, each bench, including Ipswich, had its own police force. But Greenaway started his new chapter in history mm. by performing quite well as a Queensland policeman because in December 1864, mm. he was commended for his great work in putting out a fire at a drapery store on Brisbane Street near the intersection with East Street, just down the road from you. Get out with you. Yeah, but Greenaway, he never again rose to the rank of sergeant. And despite his New Year resolution, his life was beset with tragedy. Mm. For example, in December 1866, mm. his brother John was in the South Brisbane Hotel and it was a bit worse for wear. Piddly, yeah. His 14-year-old son came to take him home but mm. was sent away. Mm. John was later found drowned in the river. And what I believe happened to Greenaway himself for the remainder of life is this. He retired from the police service and lived in Esk. In 1910, Greenaway went out shooting wallabies with his nephew. The boy mistook his uncle for a wallaby in the bushes and shot him twice. Greenaway then spent his last days in it as an inmate at the Dunwich Asylum, mm. where he died in 1920. So basically, Danny, William Greenaway's New Year resolution in 1863 uh, had good intentions, uh, but it didn't really help him in the end. So I don't know what you're going to do tonight, but uh, you know, it just might not make any difference. I couldn't give a stuff about tonight.
Every day is a new day in my life. Every day I try to do the right thing. Every day I try to do something in the community. I like to exercise. I like to eat properly. So it's just another day. All it is is an excuse for a bunch of young people to get on the P.I. <laughs> and play up a lot of them. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. And history tells that you've just got to be trying to be better every day because uh, the best is still to come. Yeah, it will, will we, that's how we're going to approach t- next year in this room. The best is yet to come. So Damien will be going in the uh, the Iron Man competition, Nutri Grain. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I can see you lining up beside Ali Day and uh, <laughs> TJ Hendy and saying, come on, fellas, don't let the body, you know, fool you. I am an absolute weapon in the ocean. Mate, I'll be there sitting on the sidelines with my bowl of Nutrigrain. You're a funny man. So how do we find this story? Yes, go to historyoutthere.com. I'll be uploading it first thing in the morning, and you can read it, you can listen to it from anywhere in the world. As you know, In fact... We've got a listener, Danny, Mm. Jacob. He's listening to us live right now in Bali. So, hi, Jacob. Great you didn't miss us while you left Ipswich and went out to Bali for a few days, but hello, but historyoutthere.com. And, of course, digital radio, he can do that. Mate, just speak quickly before we go. You were out at an old church at Brookfield and found some old brooches and that with your metal detector. Tell us quickly about that. Yeah, an old 1869 church. I found some 1860s coins and an, and a brooch with it as well. But the really spooky part, Danny, was mm. that I was walking through the nearby cemetery yeah. and the headstone I just stopped at for no reason was actually that of the very first organist at that church. Wow. Where I found the brooch and the coins. Mate, you're the best storyteller on Australian radio, on international radio. I am I think I'm taking over from Billy Jazz, the international teenage idol. Would you think? No. Well, no. intergalactic. Intergalactic, intergalactic. Radio. There you go. I can't steal. The signal keeps going. And Harold, you know how you found the brooch with yeah. the metal detector? Uh, yeah. Well, Danny found a couple. He was, uh, you know, having a good old rubbing to see if they were real. Yeah. Fortunately, they were still pinned to the woman. Yeah, you're a funny man. Uh, and get me into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly in this day and age. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, that was Harold the H. Ah, 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 peacock. Uh, telling us all about Ipswich history. Don't forget historyoutthere.com. And ladies, get your burlesque on and do us an ark, ark, ark. And there's going to be wonderful prizes. I don't know what they are yet, but we'll find something at 8.23 live on West Brimmer Radio.